Clinical trials are a very important treatment option for patients. Um, the reason is because really all of our current treatments, they were decided on prior clinical trials. So it's how we advance the field. It's how we determine how new treatments work. That's how we bring new treatments to our patients down the road. Um, and so all of these clinical trials really give us an idea of how well some of these new drugs work um, and they help us improve our therapies. I think a lot of people are always concerned when they hear clinical trial that they're going to be getting either something that's a placebo or that's not a treatment. And in cancer clinical trials and particularly in lymphoma trials that um, really you're always going to treat the patient. So every arm of a study has some sort of treatment. Now the treatments might be different. Um, but you're always getting some sort of therapy, and so you're not going to be put on a study where your cancer is not getting treated at all. And I think that's the biggest myth that's out there. Um, I think there's also always a concern that insurance companies or um, you know the patient's insurance won't pay for the clinical trial. And increasingly, I think everybody recognizes the importance of clinical trials and are going to pay for all of the what we call the standard of care. Um, options on that study. So all the tests and the scans that you would normally get in the course of any normal treatment are usually covered by most insurance companies. But there are all kinds of different types of clinical trials going on in lymphoma. And in terms of um, how the trials are set up, uh, many of these are set up depending on where you're at in your disease. So if you're very early in your disease and you've got a brand new diagnosis, almost all of those clinical trials, one part of the study is going to include what's considered the standard of care or what the standard of treatment is. And usually what's happening is the other arm is adding a new therapy already to that standard of care. And so in both cases, no matter what part of the study you're put on, you're getting the standard treatment. For people whose cancer has come back or lymphoma has come back after the standard initial treatment, there are a lot more options. So a lot of studies have various new drugs that they're adding. Um, and in many cases, there really isn't a standard treatment there. And so trying any of these new drugs and then coming back to some of the old drugs after the clinical trial is a very reasonable option for patients. Yeah, so for patients who are on a clinical trial who perhaps maybe that treatment's not working or they're having side effects, uh, it depends on the clinical trial, but there are a lot of different options in terms of what happens next. So some studies are designed so that they may switch to the other arm of the study. Some are designed so that they come off the treatment, but at that point, any of the standard options that are FDA approved are available to the patient. Other clinical trials are available. And at many institutions, there are usually three or four clinical trials actually running at the same time. So many patients can actually come off of a study because they're having a side effect or it's not working and find another study with a very active new agent as well. So I think there are a lot of options out there for clinical trials. One of the advantages of um, being on a clinical trial is that there are a lot of people involved in your care and a lot of people making sure that all the right tests are done, um, the right imaging scans are done, and everybody's looking at these very, very closely. And so I think all patients get very high-level care, but on, on a clinical trial, you have not only your doctor looking at that very closely, you have nurse practitioners, you have a study coordinator, you have the radiologist, and it's a really a big team effort to conduct that clinical trial. So you absolutely get very high level care on a clinical study. There's a lot of sort of different things to consider. One of the things is just where is the clinical trial located? You know, where are you in, in relation to that city? And many clinical trials initially, especially in the first month or two of treatment, have very frequent visits. They're checking drug levels or they are sort of monitoring other labs for additional toxicities that they want to make sure aren't happening. And so you may be coming back and forth a little more frequently than you would in the course of a standard sort of off-study treatment. So you want to make sure you can get back and forth to that place uh, very easily. I think the other things to think about is, again, there are so many different options for clinical trials, is to really just sort of ask uh, your physician, well, what are the different things out there? Which ones would you lean to? There are different clinical trials for different stages of the disease, and so really kind of thinking about what that option is, what other ones are available if that one's not working, I think are important for patients as well. In terms of cost implications for clinical trials, um, most institutions that run clinical trials uh, always do look and sort of talk very closely to the patient's insurance company. There are some insurance companies that may have clauses that they don't approve certain types of clinical trials, and so you want to make sure you're aware of that before a patient enrolls. But at all of the institutions that conduct them, we check that very closely so that the patient and the insurance company won't have any surprises when those clinical trial bills are coming in. Um, but the majority of the time, most companies are very, very willing 
to again provide all of the coverage for doctor's visits, lab tests, um, scans that you would normally have in the course of the care for lymphoma. Um, and so I would say the majority of the time there really aren't a lot of implications financially for the patient, but it's always important that the institution checks that out as the patient's enrolling on the study. I think one of the most exciting things about clinical trials right now is really some of the new innovative drugs that are being developed through studies. And many of these studies are looking at oral, non-toxic type of drugs that patients can take for many years at a time that keep their disease under control. So I think that's one of the most important things, especially if you have a recurrent lymphoma that's come back, um, is to start looking for some of those options. And that's really, I think, the wave of the future for clinical trials. One of the uh, important things to know is the Lymphoma Research Foundation does have a clinical trials locating uh, type service. Well, they'll actually take your specific type of lymphoma and your situation, do a clinicaltrials.gov search for you, and help you navigate what clinical tri trials are available in your area um, that you can then take back and talk to your physician about.